Hi, Janelle here with Sheep Hill Herbs. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to another video. Happy to have you here today as every day. So today's video is a partial clip of a class I just taught the other night on herbs for the respiratory system. And so this video will be broken up into about three or four parts because it's rather long. So I hope you enjoy it. If everyone can please like, subscribe, hit the bell button, comment, and check out my description down below. There is my link tree, which links to everything that is me, and that includes contacting me. Uh, I work one-on-one -on -one with people. I do what I call an herbal chakra consultation. So I read your chakras and give you herbal offerings to help open them. I have my home herbalist course. I have links for places like Mount Rose Herb, which is one of my favorite spots to get herbs, and a whole bunch of other things. So before I do this first section, I'm going to, uh, let's call it pull a card, from my botanical herbal deck that I got from Mount Rose Herb, botanical herb drawings. I'm trying to do a card in the beginning of each video for fun and this is your herb for the day or maybe it's the for your week if you only watch one of my videos a week i'm going to try to tilt this down so dandelion popped up and i'm going to pick something else all right oh boy <laughs> One of my favorites, yarrow. So yarrow is a, and this is also in my class here on respiratory plants. I know I talk about yarrow. I'm not w sure which section. Yarrow, Achillea millifolium, is often used as a laxative and stomach soother to treat everything from nausea to indigestion. It contains al uh, achillean. I, I have trouble saying some of these um chemistry words. So it's Achillea, so this has to be Achillean, A-C-H-I-L-L-E-I-N-E, -L -L -E -E, a compound Oops. and stuff. Mm -hmm. I would say half of them I would wind up throwing away because they, they mold at the stem. Oh. Um, so I would say either you could 200 degrees in the oven and slow slowly dry or use a dehydrator just to do you put the whole pepper in or do you cut it do you, do you i do the in my dehydrator just do the whole thing oh, but as i'm sitting here thinking i'm like maybe i would cut the stem off if you know that what would about help. the seeds do you keep the seeds yeah do you that's mm -hmm. the hot that's the potent stuff yeah that is the hot part so we would throw i was i was de-seeding it and cutting the top the top off just for a spice yeah so I should have kept the good stuff. Mm. Well, we did keep a lot of this. Well, it's definitely the spicier part. <laughs> yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we got tons of seeds. So I'm going to just talk about another, like, herb that's very, like, a, an, a mild herb that I wouldn't normally think of as um, uh, a respiratory herb, but it is, and that's lavender. And bringing it up because, um, has anyone had it in tea? Because mm -hmm. usually you don't think of it that way. I save yeah. my flowers and dry them mm -hmm. and then I can throw them in my tea. Yeah. So again, just like the chamomile, um, working with lavender for the respiratory system it can be helpful for allergies, asthma, um, all kinds of coughs. That's a same as chamomile, but I would make the tea stronger. So sometimes lavender is included in tea blends. Like I have one, my call me tea, and I don't put very much lavender in. It can overpower a tea blend. It's, you know, very flowery, mm -hmm. but for the purpose of um, working with the respiratory system, I would make a strong tea with, with the lavender petals um, like a full teaspoon per cup of boiling water. The flowers, not the... The petals, the purple petals. part. Mm -hmm. So a tea that would be a good combination would be like uh, chamomile, lavender, bone set. And so for those of you doing the course, like I don't know if you guys have tried mixing or um, making formulas yet, 
but um, so let's say if I was going to make a formula, like I know you, you know the characteristics of each of the plants. And so for me, for making that formula, I would probably say one part bone set. So if you wanted to make, just write this down. So like one part bone set and a part, just to remind you, Rebecca, do you want paper or anything? Do you have a pen instead of a, I mean, I'm using this. You don't have to take notes, but no, I just realized I, you didn't I, have to. Yeah, I was wishing I could you, have something. Well, you know what? I'm putting this on Facebook. Or not Facebook, yeah, YouTube. Okay. okay. I think it might only have markers in here. Is this a pen? No. no. Let me look in my pocket. I might. I might. Oh, here's this one. You have this one? is one of my favorite pens. Okay. Um, so one part, again, is, uh, it relates to like weights. So one part, if I was like, okay, I'm going to make one part, one ounce, or I can make one part, two ounces. Right. It depends what you want to assign it. Um, and then I would do half part chamomile, half part lavender. Now that would, and I should add this too, a quarter part ginger powder. That would be a tea that I would use for colds and flus. If I were going to make a tea for like my, you know, a, a relaxation, just enjoyment, I would change the formula. I wouldn't make it, I wouldn't use as much chamomile. I wouldn't use as much lavender. I'd probably cut them back to a quarter and I wouldn't even use the bone set then because I, I wouldn't use bone set for that. I'd probably use like red raspberry leaf or catnip or something. Mm -hmm. But that that would be a good blend to put in a jar and save for for winter. You said ginger powder would be the quarter? Yeah, you can add ginger powder. So ginger, like, have any of you in the course been doing teas with any powder? It's kind of annoying to use powder. It makes your tea a little bit cloudy. Oh, I did get something and I got but, it. What was that stuff? Anti-inflammatory stuff. Yeah. But I do use powder in a couple Chimera. of my different blend, uh, tea blends. Mm -hmm. um, if I like felt like it, or if I was like taking the time, maybe I would just slice up ginger fresh simmer my ginger first and then add the other herbs and not use the powder but um if I wanted to have this tea on hand like in case of not feeling well mm -hmm. I would mix a jar of it save it now it's in because like if you're not feeling well you're not going to cut and slice ginger and make your ginger tea do you first. make your own ginger powder out of ginger? Or do you buy I ginger? don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that but uh I sweeten with like honey or is that I sweeten with honey yeah I have a, always have a lot of ginger in my refrigerator, though. Ginger root. Mm -hmm. I use ginger often. It's good for you. I, just I like making the gin, like tea like really, really Strong, spicy. Yeah. Like this is my dandelion tea that we just got have ginger in it. Spicy. Uh, it's, it's spicy. I don't know what it is. Um, that's um, so I wanted to go to marshmallow. This plant is a funny plant. You'll find it growing, which like here it's growing against this uh, fence. It usually has these white flowers. It grows in weird places like you wouldn't, like, I, I want to say poor soils. Or it'll sprout up. Um, this is cut root. So the root is what is typically used. And... Um, so the benefit of marshmallow, so initially this was used in making marshmallows, the actual candy mm. in mm. confections is starchy. The root is starchy, um, very like slimy, slippery, thick, it's thickening and it's super beneficial. So like, or it's very beneficial to, um, mucous membranes. So whenever like anything is inflamed in lungs and throat and, and your body, it's soothing those tissues. And so that's something else like, you know, I gave you that tea blend. I might add a little bit of marshmallow root too to help soothe tissues. Hmm. 
So if you wanted to add another, that as another ingredient, I would probably do a quarter part marshmallow root. I'm so excited. I gave that decoction I made with the honey yeah. to this woman at work who's been coughing up a storm. And so oh, she's yeah. like, it's the first time I'm not spraying Vicks on the back. Like, she has this Vicks spray or something. Oh, on mm -hmm. on the, I know. On the back of her throat. And she's like, I didn't I have to. I'm like, yay. Oh, oh cool. <laughs> it does so, taste good. That's what I'm like. Oh, my gosh. That's like honey lemon ginger. ginger type. Um, it was Alec of, how do you say? Ellen Campaign. Oh. Ellen Campaign and marshmallow root oh, and nice. ginger. Yeah. Did you bring her like a thermos or something? I brought her like a little jar that oh, cool. had like the mixture in it. So yeah. mm. I'm super excited. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you want to soothe, you know, when you know when you're sick, everything can be like red and irritated and uh, just like hurting. So it's very soothing to all the tissues in the body. Um, I know, I know I talk about lobelia a lot. So I just have some dried in this bag. Do I have some over here? Oh, I should be. <laughs> Do you guys ever try lobelia tincture? No. I just a whole bunch of them. I might have you try it. How is it? Do you have any lobelia stuff for sale? Um, well, I have a little bit of the herb. Like I said, I do have a It looks like I don't have a lot, but I would have tincture if you want a bottle of it. My husband's been interested in trying it. Yeah, well, how about... I mean, uh, Rebecca, can I have one in the jars behind you? Because mm -hmm. I was like, they're not hard to make. It's just a matter of having the ingredients. Well, something. What are you using? I guess I should save my jars, but I've been canning, so. This is uh that's a nice trick. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I do this without making a mess. This, what is this for? Uh Lobelia with the apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. Ah, so okay. this yep. herb I, use I only ever use with apple cider vinegar, and this is called Indian tobacco. Oh. It's also called puke weed. Oh, great. <laughs> it will make you vomit. Do I, did I tell you guys about puke weed? I'm going to write this down. What, that's what you have in there, puke weed? <laughs> <laughs> it will help you quit a tobacco addiction. 100%. No, we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry, what is it called? Puke Indian weed. tobacco? Yeah. Lobelia. It, the Indians smoked it. Okay. It is a powerful nervine. This is one of my favorite herbs. Really? Oh my gosh. But it makes you puke. Well, if you take <laughs> a lot. So, yeah, too much. It, it doesn't smell like it anything. It is smell like. a miracle plant, L in my opinion. Lobelia. And this is for your respiratory as well. I smell that. Maybe not. It doesn't smell good. Apple in fact, vinegar. I really should order more. I get panicky when I don't have enough lobelia. Because I don't know what I would do with that. What do you use it for? All right, I'll, I'll tell you guys in a minute. But I would, just wanted to do this. Um, so I have... Oh, she didn't put the date on. So I don't know how long that's been sitting. But at least two weeks. Oh, I smell um, a bit. The cider. I have to label that. So... Hmm. You can only use the herb one time to make a tincture, correct? Yeah. Darn. <laughs> I'm just going to. You um, must have got a second, right? Yeah. <laughs> seconds. This is my seconds. <laughs> if you want to try it, I'm just going to give you a squirt of it. it it's not. It's sourish because of the vinegar. Yeah. Do you want to try? Sure. Okay. So I'm just going to drop it in your mouth <laughs> so we can share the same thing. Mm hmm. Vinegary. I got water to chase like it, though. I'm not a vinegar person. Yeah. I had some good three bean salad, so. I suck through it. It's good. Mm. No. Yeah, no, no, it's not good. Am I going to puke? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's good. I don't have a bag. <laughs> oh, that was too much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. No, it wasn't bad. I know. Just I make really funny faces when I like just stuff. <laughs> That was a strong batch. 
Because I let it, I kept meaning to strain it. That wasn't bad at all. And I haven't had time. Um, but, yeah. so Lobelia is so amazing. I, I've been talking about like chamomile will open the bronchioles mm -hmm. and expel mucus. This is the herb that expels mucus. It, that's why it has the name pukeweed. So whenever I've been not well, I can even feel it now opening. Uh, the last few years, I mean, I, I've gone through like bottles of it. Um, it, so, okay. When I couldn't talk a couple, like a month ago or whatever it was, I lost my voice. I just kept taking Lobelia. It loosens everything. And then you wind up coughing a loose cough. So like you, um, you know, when people sometimes have this dry hack cough, that's like unproductive. And then mm -hmm. it becomes comes hopefully loosened and then you wind up coughing a mucusy cough and then it clears so <clears throat> even in times of of difficulty like breathing it it opens the path the lung pathways and helps to push out any mucus really really effectively mm. it will not make you vomit unless you take a lot yeah and a lot we <laughs> I did experiment once, <laughs> not myself, but someone else who had uh, asthma, um, and I don't know if I should put this on. <laughs> um, maybe I won't put that on.